Yeah, I don't even just. I was gonna say, do you? I do. But it's like I got it as part of a wedding, and it was. Oh sure, yeah. It's like flowers, like it's okay. a floral type. Nice. Good afternoon, everybody. We got everybody here that's going to be here right now. Uh, Sarah will be joining remotely, and um, first item, I guess, is to uh, we're gonna call us to order, then do the pledge. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so uh, on item number three, we're going to approve the regular agenda. Are there any changes that need to be made to the regular agenda? Nope. I can make that. Give me a second. I'm going to ask that uh, we add an item to uh, after 10. We're going to talk about um, Country Acres and Maple Lakes again. I just want an update. I can go ahead and make that motion uh, to approve the regular agenda with the addition of, I'll just call it 10C, um, Country Acres, Maple Lakes discussion. I second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Give me just a second here. Uh, I'll turn that on. <coughs> That's what you're asking about. <coughs> I was asking if uh, Councilmember Veit is on virtually. Not yet. You want me to hold off for a minute? No, that's fine. I was just for. Okay. <coughs> for the motion and stuff. All right. It's so moving on to agenda agenda item number four: approved consent agenda. Has everybody had a chance to look at the consent agenda? Yeah. And it would be remove number or O. Okay, we're gonna take O out, put that as its own item, or just take it o out. O is a duplicate. Just a duplicate. Okay. Okay, I'll look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll a second. second. <laughs> you want a Berkman? Fine. Sure. Any uh, discussion on that? Hearing none, let's go to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Okay. <coughs> Consent agenda carries. Um, item number five approval of the City Council meeting minutes from September 18th, 2023. Anything uh, anybody needs to bring up? Make a motion to approve the minutes of the September 18, 2023 meeting. Okay, second it. Any discussion at all? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And there's none. Okay, <coughs> number six public comment. So we got a comment. Okay, go ahead and come up to the mic, please. <coughs> Greg Leopold, 64th Avenue South, Horace, my wife's back there, Kara. Um, we were listening to your conversation about the Greyhawk edition in your last meeting, and we were wondering if we can get something done like that on 64th Avenue South. You want to shut down 64th Avenue? No, it's not even a road. Are you talking like speed bumps? See, anything. Signs? The traffic going by there is 60 plus. We get dump truck after dump truck after side dump and semis that go down that road, 50 miles an hour plus, and most of it's not even finished. It's just people go mudding out there. It's ridiculous. Okay. In a minute, or not a minute, but a yep, few minutes. I already talked to him about it. So. Okay. Um, so. Have you been out there? I have not been out there recently. Okay. When it rains, people still use that road and they run it all the heck. I would. Assume, yep. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's muddy. There's 12 people that got stuck last winter 
six of them knocked on my door for help. Okay. They pulled out, or a shovel or snowblower. It's annoying. So, Jim, we the only thing we've done to that road is just add gravel. Didn't even do that. We didn't even do that? Gravel was on 57 south of 64th. So the area east of 64th is, east of 57th is where it becomes Fargo and that's I think where most of the, where there's not as much gravel there. Is that still considered minimum maintenance? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. On, on I think it's signed side? outside of the forest limits. Yeah. <coughs> so the park that's not finished, that's Fargo? Yeah. I did not know that. Right at 64th, or 57th. Right after the drain. There's a gap in there of where Fargo and, and Horace meet. So that would be Fargo's. Jace, is there any, was, would there be any way to put this area yep. up on the map? I'm just having a little hard yep, yep, yep. time uh, visualizing it. One second. Thank you. So right now all these, uh, Side dumps that are coming out of there, they're taking fill out of all from the Fargo Lake Fargo? Pile. Huh? From it's all from the Fargo pile. So that Lake Fargo that they're taking out of, is that right? Okay. Do you know where they're going? Today it was Deer Creek. So this is, and then Greg, you're this one, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. But the speeds, they carry speed 60 plus on the whole road. Yeah. <coughs> it's a 25 mile an hour speed limit with bus stops. We did put, didn't we put a you put two a signs vehicle up. and then we had some speed limit signs put on there. Yeah, if I remember right, yeah, it was 25 yeah, mile an hour. Yeah. Just so council knows, we did have some speed limit signs and overweight vehicle signs put out there. Um, do folks take that? Yeah, they do. So the overweight vehicles, if he's saying you have heavy construction equipment out there, are those signs still up or are they taken down by now? They're still up. We keep them up year-round in there. I can't remember if it's six ton or eight ton. Six. I think it's six. Believe. Yep. <coughs> who, did you guys, who did you say was taking dirt out of there? Do you guys know? Or I don't know. It looked like multiple different companies. I mean, today at least anyways. I talked to Craig about some of the like the speed issues, obviously, and and um, maybe some of the, the truck issues. Obviously, we can help deal with that as far as closing the road. As you guys know, that's not up to the sheriff's office to do that. I don't, you said it was City of Fargo that's maintaining that road. Is that what you said? I would not say they're maintaining it. <laughs> yeah, is that what you is that what you said, Brenton? Well, that's a it's a minimum minimum maintenance road. Does it fall under the city of Fargo? Though, and it would be in the Fargo ZT. Uh, Fargo has a little strip of land uh, about where the cursor was at, right there. Um, but it's actual city limits of Fargo. Outside of that, it's then the township. But mm -hmm. Fargo does, I believe, they maintain that. But like I said, it's a minimum maintenance, and they put gravel on the east half mile, closer to 45th. So going from 45th Street, a half mile east, they did some gravel, if I remember correctly, in that area. Basically, it helped the trucks getting into there, but. And then from 57th over to the drain. They didn't continue it over to 57th. They did 57th to the drain as part of the detour for 64th Avenue around the Yeah, yeah. and then it's mud after that. Then it's yeah. mud to the east of there, yeah. Yep, it's mud to the east. And that's, I believe when they it's track all that mud, right if they're coming west. Yep. Right. In the and then it mixes in with gravel, and yeah. then we have mud gravel. So, um, yes, cars take it. A lot of people don't use the best judgment when the soil is wet. You know, like I know said, you do speed some kind of dirt road. That's what I was trying to figure out. But if it's to the east, the city of Horse doesn't have any jurisdiction. It's not so I don't know why. No, but Horse has 57th. Yeah, we could go up to. So. You, Craig, would have probably have to approach the township. You'd, you'd almost have to. <coughs> well, if you did block that road, it would probably have to be through Fargo, because Fargo has what about 200 foot strip of land, if I remember right, that width, um, from 57th going east, it's around 200 feet. 
Actually, it might it might widen out and take up more of that section there. Nobody should be on that road. <clears throat> And you got a satellite picture by chance? Yep. It's from 2021, but I'm, I'm assuming, assuming that the traffic picked up on it because of the 17. Yeah, and the road, road opening. Road around and yeah. big shortcuts and stuff. And the bridge opening. <clears throat> so where where's our jurors? Okay, so you have that second house in? Yep, You're right there. Where, Brenton, can you tell me Jace could show you the cursor right where he just had the cursor, just to, <coughs> the, or to the right. Go to that next thing. Yep, right there. So that's Salem. So horse stops right there, and then Fargo has a strip of land going along 57th there that I believe is around 200 feet wide. Um, but anything, the east half of 57th, also Veterans, it lines up with Veterans Boulevard. Mm -hmm. That east half is Fargo, Fargo, not horse. Well, I mean, what can be done on a gravel road? And is it us or the township? Depends on where you put, if you were to have any traffic control measures or anything like that, it depends on the location there. <coughs> uh, For the city of Horace stuff, yeah. it just seems like we just need enforcement of the signs that are already in place as the yeah. remedy. There's mm -hmm. already speed limit signs at 25 miles an hour and then there's well, Rest weight restrictions that are on there, so it's to me it's just an enforcement type issue <coughs> yeah. for yeah, those yeah. that are traveling on the road. I mean, the city has done put up the signage. Could we tr try to get a few more signs up? Maybe, but yeah, enforcement is probably the most practical thing. Um, Cost of the speed wagon out there. Yeah, yeah. We, we can do that. That's not an issue. But I would like to actually have a couple deputies up there. So you said between six and eight, and then. Um, from five or yeah, five, seven, seven. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. We can send extra people out there. I mean, we just can't sit out there every day, but we'll try to go as much as we can. Okay. I, I mean, it, as as I'm good. not sure why it's different than Greyhawk, to be honest, because that's going into West Fargo, too. Well, we have different options of trying to slow traffic down. We don't have <coughs> the ability to have speed bumps out there. I mean, we can try, but on a gravel road, it's not, right. not going to last. I mean, they'll just get popped out um, as far as I'm not sure what kind of tickets they can hand out out there um, if they're destroying a minimum maintenance road um, I know farmers down south here have had asked that people get fined for tearing up a, a road typically if we would catch them out there we'll charge them with criminal mischief or damage to the roadway but it comes down on a couple of things it's how much damage is done if we catch them out there. If we don't, then I'm assuming you can probably be a cooperating you know, victim or a witness, I should say. Yeah, it wouldn't. Um, you know, as far as when they get to the uh, east side of my property, <coughs> I can't see them on the window because all the trees are trees. So. Yeah. I'm looking for anything to slow vehicles down, and the truck traffic is ridiculous. <coughs> it's nerve wracking when your kids are standing out there in the morning waiting for the buses. Like we've told them they have to stand behind the shrubs because like if one of those cars loses control, I mean, who knows where it's going? Yeah. Um, and the rocks and whatever else because they're just flying. Well, can we increase the patrolling? Yeah, well, I'll I know you guys are strapped people for people, but I mean, yeah. we're having serious issues <coughs> around Horace right now with traffic. And I feel the residents frustrations with it it just seems like these longer strips of road they're like runways and I I can't be the police as much as I wish I could help you, you can if you want if you want a job I, I mean because <laughs> we're short people I just, <laughs> just yeah I mean I just it's really frustrating for me too you guys like it's heartbreaking because I the last thing I want to see is somebody get hurt I'm um, honestly surprised there haven't been more accidents in Horace in general, just with all of the truck traffic. And yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. thank the Lord that there hasn't been. Right. But, so, um, do you think you guys could do that, Sheriff Jenner? Yeah, no, and then sure. do you guys want to <coughs> just maybe give us an update or something in a few weeks and let us yeah, know? Yeah, there's one that wanted us to come in and talk about it. So okay. mm -hmm. yeah, we'll just, 
when I send people down there, I'll stop them swinging and visit with you, and we'll sit down there and do some different things. You can drive what you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if we can work on it. I mean, is it? I mean, just in reality of everything, right? I mean, we'll yeah. come down and try to help you as much as you can. Force contracts for a person, we can rotate that person up here and there. Um, obviously, Cass County is a large county. We've got a lot of cities. We've got a lot of complaints yeah. all over from different, you know. Yeah. But we'll work with you as best as we can and try to help you all here as well. Yeah. What does it take to get uh, more officers trained or equipped uh, to have a scale truck or rig truck? Uh, what does so, it cost? Well, I mean, yeah, be honest. Brenton's Brenton's <laughs> asked me that before. Right now, we have, we have one person <laughs> certified to do that, and that person is down in Kindred only because they're they just wanted to work the Kindred contracts. Kindred contracts for an officer, just like you guys do. Yep. Um, it's not full time. Um, it's 20 hours a week. So. Um, when that person is not down there, then they run weights all over the whole county. Um, you know, now it's, that's important for their, us to be out all over the county because we have harvest going on. Oh, so, understood. So, so what does it so cost to get somebody to, trained up? To get another person trained up, I don't know what the total cost is. I'd have to go back and figure that out, but we have to send them to school. We have yep. to buy the scales. I think we already have the scales. We probably have to get them recertified. Um, and I gotta find someone to do it because I can tell you that people don't like to do it. Like our deputies, they don't want to do it. Why is that? Just, just don't like that job. They'd rather go out and take calls for service and do that. So it's like anything. If I ask, it's like a secondary assignment. So if I say, does anyone want to work in the scale spot? No one volunteers to do it. No one wants to do it. And if I tell them they have to do it, they're probably don't worry short. So. I mean, I can I can understand that you guys are strapped for people and mm -hmm. you guys only have this one scale guy. Yep. And you have a large county. However, I mean, Horace is one of the largest, fastest growing communities yep. in probably North Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, if you could maybe just talk to them and see if they'd be willing to help us out. Anybody wanting to? Well, it could pop up here, here and there, but I can't have them just sit in the ours. No, I get it. No, oh, I get like it. Day maybe day like day. rotating a little bit more yeah. in our no, area we, we would can, be really helpful. We can do that from time to time, but um, our main concern obviously is the whole county right yeah. now. Yeah. No, I um, get it. And you know, we can certainly ask again and see if people want to do it. But literally, no one wants to do the job. They don't. It's just not something they go into law enforcement for. Yeah. Just the way trucks. It's just not. It takes a special person to do that that wants to do that. But we're always asking, of course. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not a problem to send them up once in a while and, and check on it here and there. So Brenton's asked us that before, obviously, you know, I've done a lot, so. Yeah. Just, just, say, know. just so you know, I did, jo Sheriff John and I did talk for a while, even today, mm -hmm. and we talked about enforcing presence. We had a third position uh, trying to get somebody down here. We talked about additional enforcement of just overall traffic concerns, uh, speeds, and no parking in the park parking and no parking zones those are the two main topics that we were discussing uh, so he was looking into ways of how to address that or what to do for that so yep. we did we even had that conversation today so. yeah it's just hard because our community sees is seeing so much change yeah, and it's hard you're to break habits of <coughs> you're having growing you know, pains you're growing yeah, so yeah I get it um, so Craig will work with you Great. 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 try to help you out down there much as we can, so okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll just, you know, maybe after a couple weeks, I'll swing down and chat with you. Okay. See how things are going or whatever. And, so we work on anything and thank, thank you for coming. Please, please yeah. come back. Um, maybe in a couple, a couple sessions or a couple meetings, and then we can kind of reassess. Okay. I'd also put it on you if you guys could maybe think of something else that could yeah. be done as well. Yep. We can do some or brainstorming. Follow. Yep. We definitely will. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have public comment? Okay. Go ahead and come up to the mic. Give me your name and uh, address. Uh, my name's Andrew Saylor. Uh, I live over on Buckthorn Avenue here in Horace in Lost River Development. Um, and I was following along with some of the stuff from the last meeting with the Maple Lakes development um, with Thompson Homes and the drainage issues. And uh, they recently came out and did a patch together job of finding where they had buried the drain. And so when all of our houses on the end down there were built, we had no idea where the drain was. And so I've got, you know, probably three, four feet of the back of my yard that I can't mow, I can't do anything with, because it's just mud. 
because none of the yards drain <coughs> in any coherent way. And Thompson's out there trying to put a Band-Aid on it without fixing it. And so we're just trying to get somebody to put a little pressure on them because it's got to get fixed. I mean, it's the my neighbor two doors down, they've got a lake as big as this almost in their backyard. Yep. What, it, what is your can you bring up a map for us, yeah, please, Jason? Yes. Yeah. Uh, point out where his house is at. Yeah. Yep. So I <coughs> am on the no down and to the left. So there's Buckthorn. I am the. Uh, Top left or it, the next one, that one right there, yeah. Right, okay. Seven nine one five is mine. So it's it's affecting essentially the. I don't see far enough to see down, <coughs> but I know like the six or eight on the end there are all affected by it. In the backyard. Yeah, in the, in the backyard. Yeah. So you're on the which which ones are Thompsons? Is it seven nine? I want to I want to say the six, <coughs> the <coughs> minus the two end ones. The rest of them I think are top. Can you go on Lasser Road, Jace? Just the properties to the north of it. So yeah, right in there. On that. Yeah, right, yeah, right there. Right there. Click, Click one that one. Seven nine ten. No, you go one over. Okay, so a letter so has been sent. Letter, to they have been notified on that. Okay, one. They have, okay. Because I know they've been sent a letter for seven nine zero three, seven nine zero four, seven nine zero eight, and seven nine eleven. Okay. When were the letters sent? September twenty second. Okay. They have until so this is going to be the update later on. Do you want the okay. update later on or now? Um, maybe we could, should we? Do you want to do it now, Brent? So you just do it now. It's, do it now. It's they have until October eleventh to remedy it or show the city on or before October eleventh to show us that the property is drained properly in designated areas to the storm drains, and failure failure to do so would be um, a violation of the code. And well, I guess we can't shut off their water because it's casserole, but. It would be a code violation at that point. So they have until 11th to remedy it. And uh, for the Maple Lakes one, I asked their staff, they said uh, they believed that there was a locate submitted, but wasn't 100% sure if there was. But there were, they thought there was a locate submitted in that area for down Maple Lakes. Locate for what? Asking about Lost River. What was the locate for? I don't know. I, I don't. I don't have much information on that because I didn't know we were talking about this. <coughs> but it was. Uh, my understanding of what they said is that they believe there was a locate submitted for Maple Lakes area. As for the details of the locate, I don't have that information in front of me. So when I was out so. there with the uh, public works guys last week, um, the one house directly behind uh, the person that was here at the previous meeting, uh, the one house, that sidewalk was not wet that morning. All the rest of the houses in that row were still watering the same. And they have... The letter for Maple Lakes area, they're noticed for 10218, 10226, 10234, 10242, and 10250 Burgundy Drive. Those properties are all noticed in the letter for the same. Do they have the same remedy date? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, are they taking us seriously with this? I, I really can't answer where they're at of it, other than they have until October 11th to prove to the okay. city that they've remedied this. So I'm just they still say, have. If they are listening, I would like our <laughs> residents to be taken care of. Yeah. I, I think this is absolutely ridiculous. And maybe since, since the remedy date is the 11th and our next meeting is the 16th, maybe we should, maybe we could ask them to come and address it at the next meeting if 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 there, we're still having issues with yeah. it. I don't know, what do you think we could well, <coughs> So the way the letter's drafted, it's drafted if they don't comply by the 11th, we're going to consider it a violation okay. of the city's court. ordinances. Okay. And so it's a nuisance violation that we can then take to municipal court okay. and say that we've sent this letter, we asked them to stop watering immediately, so it sounds like that's not even being done, so we should be documenting that from city staff level if they aren't, um, or if they, they continue to water, because yeah, we, we said need to stop until the Water is absorbed in the ground, and then after that, we need to find what the what the solution is. So maybe if they're doing a locate, they are trying to work on 
um, possible grading of the lots. I don't know, speculating. I know, um, but if we ask them to, to like stop yes, with the watering. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So we can, we can try to document that. So if they continue to, to water on those properties, then we should write that down. And then, like I yeah. said, it's a municipal court type uh, violation. So we just take action through municipal court. And if not that, then district court. I will say that um, my neighbor, the two neighboring houses that they still own, those have stopped watering. So at least they're doing that. But what does that do for, for me though? Because they buried it, they buried the drain. So when my builder went to have the yard done, they had no idea where to go. And then whoever did the rest of them just kind of did whatever. And so my yard's gonna continue to flood because the yard next to mine's higher than mine. But my builder said, well, there should be drainage out here. So we kind of angled it that way and none of the yards are angled anywhere. So yeah, so that's that's why it, it's more than just a stop watering type issue. Yeah. And that's what the letter says you have until October 11th to show us that you fixed it because the ordinance says that you have to have adequate drainage if there's a storm, a public storm water provided, which in this area there was. Um, and I think for all new developments, correct? There's, there's uh, public mm -hmm. storm water drainage provided. So they need to show the city. And so that's, if that is grading the lots to ensure that they and that'll include because in the notice it, it, my number wasn't you know my lot wasn't included in that yeah the the lots that were listed are lots that are owned by thompson yeah. homes where the excessive watering issue was yeah pointed out by the city or by city staff mm -hmm. do you, you know where that drain's supposed to be i can I point out where it's at they, or where they dug anyway and put in rock basically at the ends and in the middle that one's a little shifted to the west of that but is Joel able to like tell these people before they start? I mean, what's can Joel do anything when he's working with these people? He's frequently communicating with the builders, the contractors on different issues. Now we're working towards doing some updates to our ordinances, like the building code. Mm -hmm. And one suggestion I they brought up with our staff and mentioned with the council. One thing it would be doing what's called a four corner survey, the four corner survey oh, yeah, you do talked before about and after. At the last and meeting. that's going to assure that that helps assure that the grade is done properly. When um, when can we get but that? But that's one of those that, you know, by the time that gets implemented and everything, realistically, by the time it gets implemented, you're going to be looking at the next year construction season. Year. It's not going to address this issue right now. Right. So but I do want to make sure year. that we're doing our due yeah. diligence for next year because yes. this is out of control. Yeah. So that's why we're going through, okay, how can we have assurances that it's done <coughs> properly? Um, but as this one, we're going through the process, through our ordinances there, we put them on notice. They have until the 11th to prove to us that they've addressed it. If they haven't, then we get uh, deal with, they have to deal with the municipal court. Can you guys keep us posted so, on all of that? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we are now. They're off. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, we need to take definitive action. I appreciate the letters were sent out, and I think that's a really good step in the right direction. If the 11th comes and goes, I would like to invite a representative from Thompson yeah. to the next meeting. I think that's imperative to open up this discussion. It does not uh, excuse or... Uh, create any issues with the rights that we have for municipal court, but I think that this needs to be addressed on a bigger scale, not just on an address by address basis. How does the rest of the council feel about that? I would agree, Sarah. I agree, Sarah. I agree. Great. I, I just want to make sure it doesn't in, hinder the city's ability to handle that through the legal process. So I don't, Lucas could answer. I was that. just going to make a comment. Before we get to October 11th, it sounds like they might be taking steps now to try to come up with a remedy. So it might be prudent for someone from the city to reach out to them to ask if they're, if the next step is to, like if they got to locate, if they are trying to possibly do some grading out there, it'd be nice to have that conversation with them before the 11th. Yeah. Yes, we will yeah, absolutely, Lucas. I think we should take a proactive approach and do everything we can to see to it that this work is done by the 11th. But as a remedy in the event that it's not, I don't want to rave our right to have you know, this go through the municipal court process and obviously continue that conversation. Um, 
But I agree with you. Anything we can do in advance to prod this along a little would probably be very helpful. Brenton, is there someone that you can assign that to? Yep, I'll talk with our staff tomorrow. Thank you. <clears throat> So from your standpoint, what do you need from us at this point? I mean, for me, it's getting not just their yards fixed, but my yard has to be fixed as well. I mean, I've been doing what I can, grabbing dirt where I can and trying to fill it in a little bit back there. But if I'm not doing it right, because I'm a computer programmer, I'm going to make it worse. You know, I'm just going to start flooding my neighbor's backyard even worse instead of getting it to drain somewhere. So whether it's a Thompson home or not, they're the ones that messed up that whole block. Who built your home? ISR homes. Okay. So, and so if, if they're the ones that didn't have it right to begin with, we didn't have anything basis to go off of. And so now I think all the yards over there that anybody who, you know, makes complainers willing to, or is not having, or is <coughs> having issues should be able to submit it and get the work done by them. I mean, the, it goes back to them. They, they <coughs> tore out my whole fence earlier this year and it took them five months to get it done, to get the yard fixed and get the fence put back up in one yard. You know, I, I, I'm sorry, but October 11th, I don't think it's gonna happen, that they're gonna actually get something done. So when you say they tore up your fence, <coughs> who is they? Just Thompson Homes. They, when they dug the lot next to us, <coughs> okay. they dug it right on the property line and my whole fence and yard collapsed in. And they, oh, we'll make it right, we'll <coughs> make it right. And it was, that was middle of April, I think it was like April 17th when it started. And they just finally got everything wrapped up like three weeks ago. So they're, I don't consider them responsible builders at all. And that's, that's my opinion, but I'm just not pleased with them at all. And then when they put sod down, they didn't grade the neighbor's yard properly. So they put sod right on top and now I've got a drainage ditch right down the side of my yard where all the grass is getting drained away. And this is adjoining? Cool. Yeah. Not in addition so to a, alongside? I, I would ask Lucas really quick. Of, Lucas, at what point does this become a civil issue versus a city or ordinance issue? Thing. Well, because that, that, yeah. typically drainage issues holistically when they get deeper and I'm not an attorney I, that's why I asked the attorney of this but my understanding has been when you start getting it trickling outside of the property causing a nuisance then it could be more into a civil issue between those two properties and not as much a city nuisance issue so I, I would ask uh, and maybe it takes a little bit of time to look at the situation because I would just want to make sure that we're not getting into what is really a civil issue versus an ordinance. Have you spoken with them issue. about your yard and your concerns? I haven't spoken to them recently about the when they put the saw down and left the drainage or the backyard. Did, did you sign off on something saying that the work was completed to your satisfaction? Nope. <coughs> so some of the stuff he's describing is civil. Correct. And that's what I'm getting but, at. Yeah. yeah. Some of the, the drainage stuff. I mean, we need we need time to have a conversation with Thompson. Let's let the letter run its course, and then we'll just have to develop a game plan after that. But I mean, it, and it sounds like you guys are doing the right things. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. I mean, it means a lot to me. <coughs> and I'll be back in October to see where sure. where it's at and where the next steps mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And that's all. That I mean, at this point, that's we're taking the steps that are outlined under the, the ordinance. So I think we just got to let it play out. And I mean, Andrew, have you considered sending them a letter, calling them, telling them? With the rest of the issues? Yeah, I will be. I'll, yeah, be, okay. I'll be sending them something it, on the more civil issue. It might be a timely time to do that, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be honest, be yeah. honest with that, I mean, they, they know that there's an issue and the city has it addressed, telling them they want it addressed. It might be good for you to share your thoughts with them now. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize you guys had, I had heard about the Maple Lake one or whatever. Yeah. I didn't realize you guys had sent a, had sent a letter yeah. on this one as well. So yeah, I will, I'll follow up with them as well. Thank you. So yeah. Yep. yep. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Anybody else have anything for public comment? Okay. Moving on to the next agenda item. We have uh, the sheriff here tonight actually, which is good. <coughs> 
All right, thank you, uh, members of the commission. Um, as, as you guys probably remember, some of you remember, I travel around every year and do uh, the Cass County Sheriff's Office yearly report um, to all of our cities out in the county. And so um, just starting to do that right now. You guys are, this is the second month where I've attended uh, city council meetings. So um, again, this is the yearly report for the whole Sheriff's Office for the whole county. And this will give you a good idea of our resources that we have available throughout the county and you guys are a little bit unique because you contract but we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. <clears throat> so I guess the first thing I would ask everyone is does everyone know what the difference is between the sheriff's office and like Fargo Police Department and West Fargo Police Department? Yep. Okay. So we've got jurisdiction over the whole county and of course those entities can just stay in their uh, respective areas <coughs> where they've been hired to work and so um, you know sometimes we'll get asked about you guys, can you guys patrol in the city of Fargo? Can you patrol in the city of West Fargo? We can, um, but based on the fact that they have police departments there, we try to concentrate our resources out in the rural areas so that, just because a lot of the towns out in the rural areas don't have enough money to have their, police their own police department, so, okay? And then as the sheriff, I'm an elected uh, person, so every year I run for my position, and I would just tell you that I think if the sheriff position is the <coughs> greatest law enforcement position that anyone could have because I've worked directly for the people of Cass County. There isn't anyone that has oversight over the office other than the voters of Cass County. Okay? Um, and then along with that is the sheriff is responsible for overseeing and maintaining the Cass County Jail. There's one jail in Cass County and the sheriff is responsible for that. And we'll jump into that when I get to that, but the jail's in bad shape right now, so I'll we'll talk about that. Um, so Cass County encompasses 1,768 square miles and there's 27 cities within Cass County um, that includes um, the cities of Fargo and West Fargo. So a lot of cities um, that we are responsible for patrolling in a large uh, square mileage area that we're responsible for patrolling. Our annual budget when I started, I, the budget starts from when I um, began my first <coughs> time as sheriff, which, which was in 2019. Um, our, our annual budget was 19 million. And for the first three years, we were somewhat able to balance that and kind of stay the same. And then in 2022, we jumped up by $3 million, and that was because we added an, a new intake area onto our booking area at the jail. We were experiencing some intake issues with uh, the size of that and um, some of the detox um, services that we, that we provide in that initial booking area. And then in 2025, or 2023, excuse me, it went up by $2 million, and that was for some additional staffing that we needed in, in relation to medical services at the jail. And then in 2024, we added some additional employees, so that was the, the cost of that as, a, as our communities keep growing and our population keeps growing. Uh, we, we need to add different people at different times, so um, that is our current budget projection going into 2024, approved budget, I should say, at this point. The jail, of course, is a big chunk of our budget. It takes a lot of a lot of money, and most people don't know this, but we have approximately <coughs> 35 employees at the sheriff's office. Um, when <coughs> we're in the process of adding a new new pot onto the jail right now, it'll take a year to be done. We'll be around 250 employee positions, so we are the we're the largest um, law enforcement agency, not sworn wise, but just total employees in the state of North Dakota. Um, as far as sworn officers, we've got 120 of those. A sworn officer is an officer that can go out and perform law enforcement functions. The other, our, our other rest of our staff are correctional officers who aren't sworn peace officers, okay? So we'll, I'll give you a breakdown of that here in just a minute. But correctional officers, we have 56. Sheriff's Reserve officers, um, 15. And support staff, approximately 44. Okay, so patrol officers, we have three <coughs> patrol officers, and that includes our school resource deputies. Okay, so um, if you think about the size of our county and how many cities we have, that's not a lot, especially when you're breaking things into shifts. Um, I'm sorry. Just, what's that? that? I'm sorry, say that again. Your patrol officers are also the resource officers? Um, no, included in this number is, in this 30, is also our school resource deputies. So we have, so a marked patrol car, we have 30 of those, and part of that number is also including our school resource deputies. So How many of those do you have? schools all day? Yes. How many of those do you have? We have a full-time, I was going to get to it, but we just talk about it now. Um, we have a full-time school resource deputy in Tower City. 
one at Northern Cass, one at Central Cass, one at um, Kindred. Kindred just went full time. And then we have 20 hours that are provided to the Mapleton School. And those deputies are there because the school pays to have them there. So, okay. You guys, of course, have West Fargo out here. <coughs> it falls under the West Fargo School District. Yeah. So that's included in that that 30 number. So if we if we take those out of there, okay, we've got 25 people out patrolling the whole county on different shifts. That's not a ton, um, but that's what our budget allows. So. Um, that's why when we were talking earlier about assisting with uh, the traffic complaints and I was asking Craig like what would be the most times or the beneficial times to be out there so that we can kind of concentrate on the times when these have problems because we got to rotate our deputies around the whole county to address other concerns that people have as well. So um, we have seven investigators, eight uh, deputies who just serve civil warrant, civil process and warrants. Um, does everyone know what a civil process paper is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that would be like a small claims action. Um, if Paul subpoenaed to go to court, our deputies would locate him and give him his subpoena. He might be a witness or something, right? Um, if Matt's got a, uh, <laughs> um, if Matt is, uh, if Matt Matt has um, has filed a small claims action against someone and has paid the court to do that, then we would go serve those papers to the other party as well. So the sheriff's responsible for doing that in Century Code. Um, court security, I've got 18 of those. And so the Cass County Courthouse, as the sheriff, I'm responsible for providing courtroom security to all the court actions that go on every day. So I've got deputies in there in the courtrooms. That's part of our job duties. Those individuals also transport people back and forth from the jail over to court every day. So that's those are those 18. Um, then we have a sheriff's roster and reserve, so those are extra deputies that don't work here every day. They have other jobs, but they come and help us on the weekend. So it might have been maybe we've got some Fargo officers that worked for Fargo PD at one time, and then they, they didn't want to do law enforcement anymore, so they left that and went and worked in the private sector, but they still have a peace officer's license, and they came and said, hey, I'd like to still do law enforcement functions from time to time. So we take their license and activate it, and they might be the ones that come out and work or street towns out here on the weekend. <coughs> okay. So that's what that sheriff's reserve and roster position is. And then of course 90 in the jail. Um, our mission, vision, and values, I'm not going to read that verbatim, but um, you know, just some highlights obviously where our mission of our office is to enhance public safety by building strong community partnerships and um, department partnerships with other agencies and providing excellent customer service. And um, you know, down here just some of the terms that we that we expect our our uh, deputies to abide by every day when they go out. And so literally this is kind of the roadmap. So when our guys are out working, I tell you know, this is the main thing. I tell them to make sure that you're following the mission, vision and values of the organization, right? And to to me, reasonable reasonableness is a big term for us and accountability. So what I mean, what I mean by reasonableness is when our deputies are out and they're making decisions. Um, every day I, I ask them if something comes up or someone calls in a complaint and I say, do you think it was reasonable? You know, would a normal person think that was reasonable, one of our citizens? And that, for example, someone driving 121 through a 40 mile an hour zone, right, to catch a speeder. That was maybe going 10 miles over the speed limit. Did our deputies put more people at risk by their driving by behavior than what the person that was going 10 miles an hour over? Was doing was that reasonable was that a reasonable decision so and that's how we you know look at different things that our people are involved in um, <coughs> they're always being professional and now we have accountability so um all right so getting into some of our contracts as you guys know in the city of castleton they contract for two full-time deputies and they're provided 80 hours a week um, you guys have two full-time right now so you're provided 80 hours a week um, the city of Kindred has one half-time deputy, so they get 20 hours a week. And the city of Mapleton contracts for uh, quarter-time deputies, so they get 10 hours designated a week uh, to their respective cities. Um, we'll talk about how much those contracts are here in just a minute. This right here, when again, when I, I started my term in 2019, these, this was our average calls for <coughs> service per year. This is over the whole county. So calls for service is someone calling something into dispatch. 
that they want our deputies to check on, or it could be an officer initiated calls for service. It could be a deputy driving into a city and telling dispatch that they're gonna get out of their car and walk around and check business doors and make sure that businesses lock their, their business and they don't get burglarized. That could be a calls for service. So in 2019, we were at 17,230, and you can see how that's grown to, I, this is through today's date, like this is most current numbers. I have my guy give me those before I went out today. 2023, we're at 31,990 already, okay, up to October 1st. This is where we stand compared to other agencies. So Fargo PD, of course, is at 71,661. Of course, they've got a higher population. Uh, West Fargo PD is at 25,107, and again, we're at 31, so we're 6,000 over them. More at PD is at 25,000, and Clay County Sheriff's Office is at 18. So our calls for service are definitely jumping up, and that's attributed to our, obviously, the population increase in Cass County. So that's, those are large numbers. All right, and there's the, there's the numbers for your contract. So um, if you have two full-time deputies, the city pays 192,819. Now, obviously, that's a pretty good deal. Um, in my opinion, because the, you guys are paying for the deputy's salary and benefits, and the county, in turn, is paying for the equipment and everything to outfit. <coughs> That's not cheap. That's about 80000 80, 85000 to equip one patrol vehicle mm -hmm. with all the stuff in it. That's buying the vehicle, scraping it, putting the computer in there, the deputy burner in the uniform, you know, buying a service weapon, everything that I have on the taser, um, having a license in their car to run things on the computer, all those things cost money, okay? So um, if, they, if you had one full-time person, it would be about 96000 So, And then our school resource deputies, I already told you where we have those, and then how that's funded, same thing as school pays. It's a little bit different pay schedule, but the, the school pays to have our deputies um, in those schools. And again, it's a cost share with, with Cass County government, and, as far as I know, we're the only county in North Dakota that um, the county pitches in and helps put school resource deputies in the schools. So we're pretty fortunate that way because those relationships are super important. Okay. Um, so the, the jail, you can kind of ignore this if you want to, you can look at that, but I don't have the numbers to do for me. But the jail's in really bad shape right now. Um, about a year ago, we started seeing higher increases in population and we were running up to our threshold of being overpopulated. The capacity, the current capacity at the jail right now is 348. <coughs> and then you can add 10 onto that to 358 for our booking area. Okay, but those aren't permanent housing cells. Those are for just when people come in and they get booked in, they're in those areas for a short time and they go back to general housing if they're staying there. We have been going in to the weekends with 345 people in the city, <coughs> leaving us three beds for the whole weekend. What do you guys think it is on average every weekend? How many people do you think are arrested on average in Cass County? Anyone want to take a guess? 30. 30. 30 to 40. That's a good guess. 30 to 40 on average every weekend. I'm going into the weekends with three beds available. Okay, that's with me having 25 inmates at other jails right now having another 15 on community supervision, which means they're not coming to the jail, but they're in my custody. They're wearing an ankle bracelet, and I have people that go check on them every day. Those people aren't at the jail, and having approximately five people at the state hospital. So we are way over capacity. Now, we aren't the only ones that are like that. Um, the state pen right now is housing people that are state pen prisoners in McKenzie County jail because the state pen doesn't have room. When someone is sentenced to 365 days or more, then they go to the state pen. If they're serving their sentence and it's under 365 days, they stay at the jail. Okay, We're building another pod. It's going to give us another 192 beds, but it ain't going to be done until a year from this spring. When that opens, that's probably going to be half full already. So I'm just giving painting a picture, and now we're lucky because Cass County government used um, ARPA funds 
in CARES dollars to build the jail. The cost of the new jail is $34 million, and that was covered with those funds so we didn't have to go to taxpayers and ask to increase their taxes to get the jail. We got lucky there this time, but um, I'm going to guess that when that opens, I'm going to probably have to start asking the commission again to look at adding some more room already because it took me about a year and a half to convince the commission to get this one built because it's a lot of money, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not just a five hundred thousand dollars here. So, so we're we're in bad shape. What does that mean? That means that when people are arrested, sometimes on the weekend, if they have misdemeanor charges and they don't have a violent criminal history and their charges aren't violent, they're not being brought to the jail when they normally would be. They're given a court date out on the street and told to come back two weeks later and go to court for it because there's no room. I got to leave those beds open for people that are committing violent offenses. So I just give everyone a reality check here that it's not good. And I have many sleepless nights of people not coming into the jail because guess whose responsibility that is if they don't, if they're not allowed in there? The sheriff of Cass County because they were they were remanded into my custody, and I'm, I don't have a choice. So, if we go over that 348, DOCR Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation that oversees the state pen will come in and shut the jail down because there's people can only be in so much square footage. <coughs> if we have a cell that has one bunk in it and has so much square footage in, if I put two people in there, they'll you can't do that cells to be big enough for two people it's there's a lot of rules with it so yeah that makes sense to everyone yeah it's not a good situation so all right some of this stuff I'm gonna skip over because that's why I just talked about it just had it in slides and rather than read it off the slides so I just have a couple pictures in here of what the inside of the jail looks like right now um, well, I just think you just jump into slides uh, all right so warrants received um, these are how many warrants we take in every year People that don't show up for court. Um, I don't have 2023s yet, and then here's this amount of civil process papers that our guys serve uh, every year. And court hearings, how many court hearings? <coughs> I don't want to do this for three hours, so I'm <coughs> some things. All right, so this thing, this is our crimes um, in Cass County. So obviously, every year our highest amount of crimes are always thefts. You see larceny, larceny here, excuse me. That's always our highest number of us is people stealing other people's property. And okay? um, there's a number of things that we can all do as a, as a group to try to minimize this number. I mean, we get people that have cars stolen a lot where they people just left their keys in their car. You know, and, and we're not in a, unfortunately, we're not in a small area anymore. We're in a big area and, and people gotta lock their stuff up, so, okay. Um, this one here looks a little alarming. Uh, pornography and obscene material, and that one's you can see has gotten higher. The reason that is is because I've assigned someone to our ICAC task force. ICAC stands for Internet Crimes Against Children, and we never had anyone on that task force before, but I assigned someone to there last year. And so that, unfortunately, is really busy. And that person is doing a lot of cases, and so the reason that the number is higher is because I actually have someone in that spot now and they're investigating them. So it, although the number looks high and that's not good, it's good because of the fact that they're getting investigated now and that's showing up in the numbers. Mm -hmm. So, okay, but as a, we all know in here, mm -hmm. technology is a big piece right now. We gain a lot, of, um, a lot of good things from putting someone in that position. Number one, they get a lot of extra training on how to download cell phones, look through cell phones, keep up on apps computer technology to investigate that stuff because not all of our officers get that training and as everyone knows in here there's a lot of apps out there that people are trying to take advantage of our children so and if you don't know how to recognize that stuff it's hard to investigate it so um, okay then we got two canines as everyone knows that these these uh, in order to get these canines up to working capacity is really expensive it's about 20 grand per dog <coughs> Um, to, to start a canine program. Um, we've been very fortunate because we had Shields partner with us. They gave us money for one of the dogs. And then we also um, had Griggs, um, <coughs> Griggs Communications down by near Kindred. 
they give us the money for the other dog. So actually this didn't cost the taxpayers any money. Um, this money was donated by those entities so that we could start two canine programs. So we we're really lucky that way. We also have a community outreach dog that we'll be starting here over the next month. And the, the purpose behind that dog is for that deputy to take that dog to our schools and interact with children and make the children feel comfortable about talking to our deputies. Um, and it's also a little meant to go out and that uh, deputy will go out to the different companies and stop in businesses and visit with people. And as we all know, a lot of people like dogs, so that helps um, sometimes people or uh, for us to bridge that gap in communication with people and build those important relationships. Um, and that dog was also donated to us. So we'll be releasing that over the next month. We'll see that in the media. We'll do a press release on that. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. What's our new crimes against children? And of course, we've got someone assigned to our Metro Area Street Crimes Unit, our Cass County Drug Task Force. Um, so those are other resources where we have staged um, in different positions. That's some of the stuff that they've been seizing. Those are M30 pills. Um, a lot of the pills that are responsible for the overdose deaths in our area, um, mostly laced with fentanyl, carfentanyl. <clears throat> um, of course, we got people assigned to the bomb unit uh, in Red River Valley SWAT. So there's some of our search and rescue equipment that we have available at our office. We've got two airboats um, and we've got two snowmobiles. So obviously the airboats can be used for a lot of things. It can be taken on the water. They can be driven in the, the snow and they can actually be used over dry land, believe it or not. And um, those were given to us by the state of North Dakota. We got two of them. They're about $100,000 per unit. Um, and we got those from the state of North Dakota when they are having the floods. They said, we'll buy these boats for you in agreement that you will go anywhere in the state and help if someone's having a flood, that you will allow your staff to go help. And I said, uh, Sheriff Laney at the time said yes, I was their boat commander. I said, most definitely, let's do that. That's a win-win for us. Uh, we're gonna get two free resources to increase our search and rescue capabilities in Cass County. So why would we not do that? So we did that and we've had to go deploy to a few, to some different parts of the state a couple times, but not very often. So it was really a win-win for us. And then that's our winter response vehicle I showed you guys before. And now we really just added that into our repertoire because we've had some issues in the, over the past winters getting the people during calls for service. Um, there was actually a calls for service that happened south of the forest, a domestic, husband and wife, wife was locked in the bathroom. Husband's trying to kick in the door, they had their small child in the bathroom, and it was during a blizzard one night and we couldn't get to them with our patrol vehicles. And I had to call up the county, county road department to pull us a road down there to get to the bird to the individuals and it took us an hour and a half to get there and she was obviously very frightened for an hour and a half and I told the commissioners this can't happen when people call 911. They're expecting that we're going to show up and help them and we couldn't get to this person. That was the helpless feeling. So they gave us this old county road department truck that only had 70,000 miles on. That's totally fine. We don't need anything new. We don't use it all the time. Um, but it was still a very useful truck. And so they gave us that. It just stayed within Cass County government. And they, all they did was buy us the plow. We already had snowmobiles. So we put the snowmobiles on back and now we'll go as far as we can with that truck with the plow. And if we can't go any farther, then we'll download the snowmobiles and use those to go in the rest of the way. And we had to do that twice last winter. Use the snowmobiles. So. And we do have a motorcycle. Um, two of them actually, two Harleys. Uh, they don't get utilized all that much because there's obviously a limitation in the fact that if our guy stops someone on a traffic stop and the person has an outstanding warrant and we're going to bring them to jail, we have to call another patrol unit there to transport them because when I ask my guys, well, why don't you just handcuff them and throw them on the bike with you and ride them into the jail, they didn't like that. They didn't want to do that. So then I said, okay, well, how about if I get you a sidecar? And they didn't want to do that either. So now, uh, so they're kind of somewhat limited. Um, that'd be quite the picture, wouldn't it? When the person yeah. handcuffed and they're riding in. Okay, um, so last thing here, and then I'll just turn it over for you guys' questions. So I go around and I teach um, a lot of active shooter, active threat classes to their businesses in Cass County and to our schools. Um, when I went and taught at a business in Fargo, I won't use the name because they asked if I wouldn't. Um, the, the lady that sat in the front of this business said, uh, Jesse, I'd like you to look at this photo. And so she showed me this photo. Um, so 
This was taken on July 2nd at 1227 p.m. So it's summertime, July was really hot that day, about 90 degrees. This person's wearing coveralls and a ski mask. So just by everyone's raising their hand, I'd like everyone to participate in this. How many of you guys think this is suspicious, given the time of day and where it happened? Everyone does, right? Okay, awesome. So she's sitting at her front desk and she sees this person walking across the parking lot and she's, she gets a couple of the other workers and she says, hey, look at this. And they watch this guy walk across the parking lot and he disappears. And, shows, and so she shows me the, the picture and she tells me about it and I said, well, did you guys do anything? And she said, no, we didn't know, we didn't do anything. And I feel kind of bad about it. I said, okay, well, hey, um, can I take this picture and use it as a training uh, picture? And she said, yeah, I'm just gonna use our business. <coughs> so my question is, we all raised our hands and thought this was suspicious, right? Okay, so why do you guys think someone wouldn't call this in? What do you guys think? Maybe waste of time if it wasn't anything big. Or okay, not sure what it was, right? Okay, what else? What else do you guys think? There's Maybe. a lot of weird people out there. That <laughs> okay, so there may be some weird people out there. Okay. Um, <laughs> no. Maybe the, my, my, the first thing that popped in my mind is, um, and maybe it's because I was doing this job for a little while, maybe the person didn't feel comfortable with reporting it because they'd never reported anything before. They didn't know how to do it. And maybe they didn't know how to contact a person that reported. Okay. <coughs> or, they were thinking to themselves, I don't want to bother law enforcement. Because I've heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. I've heard people have called to me and said, hey, Jesse, you know what I was going to call this in the other day? But I don't want to bother you guys. I know you're really busy. So just real quick on that note, you're not bothering us if you call and report something. Because guess what? It actually takes more resources on the back end if we don't get called right away. Because then we have to, I have to put investigators in here. And we have to go collect videos and try to figure out who this person is. And that takes a lot of time as opposed to if we would have just went there right away and dealt with the person. It would have just taken probably one car. So, now I don't know where this person came from. I don't know where they're going. I don't know if they did something. I don't know if they're going to do something. Or maybe there's a mental health issue going on. I don't know. But if the, they didn't call that in, what does this become? Someone else's problem, right? And we're just kicking the can down the road. So we got to call stuff like this in. So real quick, I'm going to have everyone take out their phone, everyone in here, okay, and I'm going to give you a phone number because I want everyone to feel, you already have it, so that's good. I want everyone to feel comfortable with calling things in and knowing what number to call. So everyone knows you can call 911, but I'm going to give you the direct line, non-emergent dispatch mm -hmm. number. So if you're going to put it in your phone, just put it in as dispatch, non-emergency number. Okay, and that number is 701-451-7660. 701-451-7660. Okay, now, real quick, if you're gonna call that in, here's how easy it is. Number one, you're gonna have to know what? The address of where okay. the incident's yeah. happening, and then what's going on, right? That's what you're gonna to report. So, hey, this is Jesse, I'm at 311, 13th Avenue South, I'm working at this business, I work the front desk, and we just had someone walk across the, pro the parking lot wearing coveralls and a face mask. I thought it was a little strange, because I work here every day and I don't usually see that, and it's hot outside. Would you be willing to send an uh, officer over here to check on the individual to make sure they're okay? Does that sound reasonable? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna be some follow-up questions dispatch might ask you. What do you think? Direction of travel, crossroads. Okay, crossroads. How long ago was it when this happened? So we have a, a you know if there's a time delay in there. What were they wearing? Were they male? Were they female? Did they have a weapon? Right, pretty basic. They're just gonna ask you some follow-up questions. So I think that's really why people don't call things in is they're not sure who to call. And they might be a little nervous about it. Okay, so I don't want you guys to feel that way. I want you to feel comfortable with calling things in. All right, that's the end of my slide. Does anyone have anything off of that? Any questions on that? Okay? All right. Regular questions for me. So you got me down here tonight. So obviously we didn't, you mentioned concerns uh, with traffic issues, right? All right. Craig, we know he's got some issues down at his place, and we'll work to help him out on the enforcement side of things. The road closing and things like that has to be done at a 
know, at a different angle, but we'll be able to enforce some stuff. Okay. Um, so what, what are, what's on your guys's, what are you guys thinking or what's on your mind or do you have any questions for me? Well, I just want to say I've been to one of your active um, shooter training yes. and I thought it was <coughs> amazing. Um, so if there are any residents that are watching later or listening now that own a business or anything, I'd like to put a plug <coughs> in there that I've been to Sheriff Johnner's training on that. Um, I thought it was very beneficial. It was actually very eye-opening to me, things that I never even thought of um, safety-wise. So I really do appreciate that you're doing that in our community. Um, just a few weeks ago, there was a possibility of a shooting here in Horace at the school, as you know, yep. which was absolutely frightening to me. <coughs> um, and I just... I and just we did have extra people down here, so I don't know if um, Craig or Jake mentioned that to you when mm -hmm. we have stuff like that. So. It was noticed. Um, so that's been a couple of them. In yeah. So that I'm just gonna let you guys know that the um, it gets a little tricky when it's the west when it's down here, mm -hmm. and the reason is is because we've got a few more people involved. Right? We've got West Park OPD, which we have a great relationship with, and um, and then it's down here, and and then we have the West Fargo School. So typically, if we have something out in like you know Northern Cass or whatever, we usually go try to get the information out. Um, when, when it happens at the schools, it's kind of up to them to get the information out. We're always gonna do our part and put extra people here. On the on the uh, second one that you guys had, I was down here even myself. Mm -hmm. So um, so we're always gonna do that as we have a <coughs> and make sure we have extra resources. Um, but I appreciate your, your comments. Yeah, and, it and was. I, re I do remember you being in the Yeah. Um, okay. I've been to one as well, I was looking at. It's very informative and helps people just think of different scenarios and and honestly if there are any people who own businesses I highly recommend that you um, reach out to them to do that and then I also wanted to say thank you um, I also wanted to tell you that I really enjoy having Craig and Jake out here they are uh, they are awesome to have out here and they work very hard and it, they feel like family so just yeah. wanted to put a plug in there so that you can let them know that we really appreciate them out here yep no but I do I've gotten that feedback from different people down here and I do appreciate that because not we don't always hear that stuff back so I most certainly will relay that <coughs> in the past so I, I appreciate that um, they do do a good job I know Craig I was talking with Brenton earlier Craig was you know I hear him obviously in the radio and he was doing a lot of traffic down here this morning so I know they're busy um, and pretty active so but um, you guys are obviously a growing city down here, and when you have growth, you're going to have mm -hmm. additional problems. You know that you're that you're some of those that you're experiencing. So, um, our job is to try to work with you to figure, see if we can get those figured out. Brendan calls us on a regular ba basis, and he has different concerns <clears throat> from different times uh, that we try to work on together. But um, I guess really, at some point, you know what he mentioned to me today was. Um, you know what, what you guys might be looking at in the future. So, as far as additional ideas of enforcement and resources and things like that, so that might be something that you know we need to probably think about having a more serious discussion on in the future. I don't know if tonight's the right night to do that, but so. but anything else? Any how else can we help you guys or? I appreciate the slides and going yeah, through it. I mean, it's easy yeah. for us to sit here and say, we need you, we need you. Um, just putting into it, putting it into perspective really helps. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little scary. Some of the information that you gave, just knowing how strained you guys are <coughs> with certain things, um, but we appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would love to have a lot more people but you know, we got to make sure that we're being fiscally responsible too. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate you over, so. taking your time tonight. This is really interesting and valuable information for yeah, us and the sure. residents. So I really appreciate you coming. Yeah. And just, you know, let Brenton know we'll, we'll try to do, continue to do more enforcement. Is there certain times other than what Craig gave me that you guys are having seen any issues on anything? So just to re recap what I've... That was, that was, forgive me. That was my question. Um, this was Sarah on the other end, and Jesse, we hear you. I, I think you hit the nail on the 
again about having discussions about next steps as our community grows. Um, I would like to nail down some times for that. And I know that myself and probably a few other council members would be very interested in being a part of that. So um, Brett, and I'm sure that's where you're going here with the, the next conversation. But yes, this was an excellent presentation. It really gives us an idea of where we're at today, where you're at, where we need to go, and what we need to start planning for in the future. So what I was going to bring up is some of that, but it was just to remind the council, the areas that staff recently has brought up with Sheriff John and his staff have been a lot of the frustrations that we get at the staff level and from residents have been um, traffic in neighborhoods, like we heard tonight about speed. You know, that's not uncommon in just certain neighborhoods. It's happening all over. Um, enforcement of ordinances like the traffic, no parking, uh, that's been another one. And trying to get, the, you know, making sure the contractors know, you know, if it's signs say no parking, it means no parking. You can go park on the other side of the street. Typically, we've been do doing no parking on one side, not both, as much of just trying to work with folks there. Um, and, um, Really, just if there's any other miscellaneous type things, but those have been, we've had a few odd end ones. We had a boat trailer that somebody cut the tongue off the front of a boat trailer, um, stolen boat, filled it with tires also, and then it was left on one of the city streets. And so we were working with the sheriff's office on that and pushing to let's get this taken care of, get this out of the way, um, and trying to get that done in a timely manner, just because. You know, we can't have that stuff just sitting out there on our streets and stuff. Like it was just, my understanding it was a stolen boat. Yep. So, winter's coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, those are just some of the different examples, and just asking, hey, can we find ways to start pushing this stuff a little bit more and being more aggressive of, you know, warn people, give them a heads up, try to educate, but at the same time. If you've educated somebody so many times, then you gotta yeah, start yeah. pushing them a little bit more. Yeah, so law enforcement. We do yeah. have um, one thing that we're working on right now internally is just trying to assign <coughs> someone a look. I'm trying to look and see based on our contracts if we need to designate uh, more of a supervisor to just the contracts um, so that there's more of a conduit um, for your guys' concerns to that person. I mean, certainly Brenton can always call me. Um, but as I'm trying to run four divisions, sometimes it takes me a little while to catch up on the information because I'm not out all the time. So me sometimes transferring that to a patrol sergeant would know if our guys are dealing with that on more of a day-to-day -day basis than I would know, right? Because if I don't know those things, then what am I going to do? I'm going to go down and talk to the person and say, hey, get this boat moved or whatever. We'll use that as an example. And I might not know that our deputies talk <coughs> to you two days before that because they're out working the street every day. So. Um, trying to streamline some communication so we don't have some miss, misses there, and I think that's going to probably constitute us as we're going, having someone just in charge of the city contracts as more of like a sergeant or something. That's more of a direct conduit for information sharing and stuff. So, mm -hmm. so we're just trying to do some tweaks that way. <coughs> mm -hmm. And if there are priorities that like I didn't touch base on, you know, you're giving feedback tonight, but if there are, please let me know. Uh, we go straight <coughs> up to the deputies, but also I encourage you to let me know and I can relay that to the Sheriff John here. So he hears it. If, if it's a concern you want to bring up during the meeting or outside the meeting, let me know. And I can pass it on and say, hey, here's the concerns or here's the feedback I'm hearing. Because I will pass on feedback I'm hearing of <coughs> or there's people writing stop signs, you know, maybe to the deputies or it may be to Sheriff John here and asking them to, you know, just take a look at it and see what they do or can do. So, mm -hmm. any citizens have any questions for me? Anything? Yeah. Uh -huh. Craig's just like, I need to see your guys tomorrow. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, anyone on, do you have a lot of people listeners online? Is there anyone on there that has a question for me or anything? Oh, this is just Sarah. Okay. Uh, Sarah, do you have any other questions? No, just my sincere thanks to Jesse and his officers that give us just tremendous support. We appreciate you all. Thank you. Yep. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll take a
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the uh, manhole adjustments project, and uh, Jim is going to be uh, covering that. Yes, uh, City Council. So a couple more, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, we brought forward with you a, pro a plan to do overlays on Lost River Fifth Edition, Southdale Farms First, Southdale Farms Third Editions. So, uh, due to the lateness of the year, I've been talking to some contractors, and they figure that if we do bid out some projects now for next year work, we're going to get some fluff factor built into that. So they actually recommended bidding them later on or earlier next year, later this year, not right now, because oil prices are just kind of fluctuating right now. So uh, with that being said, there are uh, 10 manholes and 18 gay valves that need to be uh, modified before winter so we don't tear up more snow plows. So we did reach out to Frusa Construction, who does a lot of manhole um, adjustments for the paving contractors. They were supposed to have us a quote uh, yesterday, today, this afternoon, but <coughs> they on vacation last week, and they didn't get to it today. So tomorrow morning is what they promised us earlier today. but. Um, I'd rather not wait another two weeks to bring this before you. So uh, traditionally they've been about $1,000 per manhole and $750 or so per gate valve. So with that being said, uh, we have 10, 10 gate, uh, manholes at $1,000, 18 at 750 So about $23,500. I'm asking for kind of a cap on that or just a, not to exceed maybe $25,000 for this, this work to get it done before winter and while the asphalt plants are still open. So. We would get a quote from them, and provided it's under that, we would go with that. And if it's not, we would just have to pare some things down, and maybe some of the bad ones wouldn't get done, but at least the majority of the bad ones would get done. So uh, don't tear up the snow plows this winter. Okay. Questions? Um, just our, what's our funding source? So this one, as we talked about before, there's some money left over in the, in the districts, and then there's sales tax okay. for infrastructure was being used. And I don't know which which bucket the, the finance guys want to take it out of, but it'd be at one of those two sources. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? I will make a motion um, to approve, not to exceed. <coughs> you said twenty-five thousand for yeah. the manhole adjustments project. Manhole adjustments and gate valve. Manhole gate valve adjustments. Yep. Yep. That. Yeah. Jim, is twenty-five thousand enough, or do you yeah. want to go up to the twenty-six? No, pretty confident in the pricing. So what I had was I, I had a little bit of extra in it at twenty-three-five. So I think another twenty-five hundred on top of that, or fifteen hundred on top of that would be just fine. So twenty-five thousand should be just fine. Okay, my motion's not okay. to exceed twenty-five thousand. Perfect. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on to number nine, uh, ND Cares. Uh, we got Jace Hellman to yep. talk about that. So, members of the council, bringing this for you tonight after some discussion with Councilmember Brooklyn uh, about some different ways that we can get our community involved in some of the programs that the state has. Um, and the first one we have taken a look at is the North Dakota Car Cares Community Program. Um, essentially, this was created as an extension of the North Dakota CARES uh, group uh, to strengthen accessible, seamless network of support for service members, veterans, families, and survivors, or SMBFS uh, for short. And the North Dakota Community Program, our North Dakota CARES Community Program, will uh, create a welcoming and supportive environment across North Dakota for SMBFS, uh, incre increase awareness of local and state support for SMBFS. Uh, and include every city in our state, no matter how large or small. Uh, and then establish local events and other activities to educate the community and to honor those folks um, and serve as North Dakota's involvement in the joining community forces and community military covenant programs. So what we're uh, asking tonight is just to direct staff to uh, form a North Dakota CARES Committee, our North Dakota CARES Community Program Committee and that's a part of our application status that we need to put in place in order to apply to become a North Dakota CARES community. Um, and once we create a local steering committee and get that group established, we'll be coming back <coughs> to you uh, with a resolution of support that we'll ask council to provide. And all of that will be included as a part of our application uh, to do that. That will include some signs that get put onto our NDDOT uh, signs and 
Um, part of it's just kind of building awareness and, and creating some supportive events, some stuff we already do um, just to honor veterans and their families. So I don't know if you have anything else you want to add yeah. to that. Or? Um, I, when I was at the League of Cities a few years ago, it wasn't at this last session, but um, a few years ago I was up at Bismarck with um, the League of Cities and I had stopped at one of these, um, what do you call them, vendors? Or Vendor booth, yeah. yeah. And they were visiting with me about the North Dakota CARES um, program. And um, I've, I don't know if you guys have noticed some, when you enter into some communities, <coughs> some communities they actually have <coughs> the North Dakota CARES sign um, listed uh, or shown where they have their welcome to whatever town, whatever community. I really wanted to get us on the map for that because, like Jay said, uh, we are currently in our community already doing things like placing the flags on the poles. Um, I think they have the Lions Club does some some things in the community. Um, I know that they do the ceremony out at the cemetery. Um, so there are things that we that we are already doing, and I thought it would be. A good thing to get Horace on the map for that and just show our appreciation for these um, service members they have a special place in my heart um, all of my uncles my dad they have all um, served in the military um, and we owe them so I thought it would be nice to do something for the community and um, was hoping to get your guys' thoughts Yeah, I really like it. I'll be honest, I hadn't heard of it, and so oh. I'm glad you guys brought it forward for for review. I really like it. I agree. This is something I think we could easily right. do. Go ahead, sir. Oh, you're fine. North Dakota Cares is a wonderful program. Uh, Naomi, I'm very familiar with the signage, and um, have the <laughs> the honor of having several family members that are in the military currently along with a long line all the way back to the Civil War of family members. So I too feel very strongly about this. I was thrilled to see additional involvement and I know I've been asked several times, what do we do for veterans? What do we do to support our military? This is a fabulous way to do it and I couldn't be more supportive. Good job. So yeah, we'll, uh basically just acting or asking for us to direct staff to kind of begin the process by uh, creating a committee which will be involved in in planning and continuing and building on the things that we already do for events we're required to hold at least one a year as a North Dakota CARES community um, and you know we'll probably be reaching out to you guys if you have anyone who you think would be good to sit on the committee or if you yourselves want to sit on that committee we can have we have to have at least three but we can add as many as we want but I think first step is just establishing that committee and then we'll move forward with a resolution probably in a month or so to get the application started wonderful yeah okay Jeff, I have a I have a name right off the top of my head for uh, involvement in that committee and it's one person that had reached out to me previously in your neighborhood that feels very strong. That lady on the corner down in your neighborhood feels very strongly about support for veterans. I would um, reach out to her first and <coughs> foremost give her, give her first dibs on this opportunity. I think she would be back with her. Okay, I can do that. <clears throat> I'd be willing to serve on the committee um, if you need people. Yeah, I would do that. Okay, well, yeah, I think then I'll probably reach out to you guys tomorrow um, okay. if this if that's the action you guys are gonna make of directing us to do that and then we'll get started on this. I'll go ahead and make that motion then tonight. All right, I will second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? No, thank you guys for supporting this. All those in favor say aye. 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 And no opposed. Motion carries. All right, number 10, uh, water, sewer, storm, and street ID number 2021-1, Southdale Farms, third edition, uh, backyard storm sewer. Um, J, 
Jim. Yes, City Council. So we have two things tonight. First is a final review and acceptance. The project is complete, has been reviewed by city staff, and is recommending acceptance of the project. The project was completed by Dakota Underground on October, uh, we're accepting it today, October 2nd, so the one-year warranty period starts today. Uh, it's just a uh, standard form we have that once the city accepts it, it puts in writing <coughs> when the, guarantee, when the uh, warranty period starts and then everyone's on the same page of when the project was complete. So uh, that's the first thing we have. So any questions on that? Don't. Um, and this is the one that we're going to be talking about tomorrow night. The uh, or at least one of the projects tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, but the, it, yeah, tomorrow night's special Christmas. This is. Uh, I understand. Some, some sort of, but but yes. okay. Do you want to make a motion on this one, or do you want to go to the next part? Of it? I think we can do them both at the same time, can't we? Okay. Uh, the second the item you have is the final pay progressive estimate to the code underground in the amount of eighteen thousand four hundred seventy six dollars and eleven cents. This is a final final contract. So we were contract was for one hundred twenty four thousand one hundred forty six dollars and twenty cents. We're one hundred twenty three thousand five hundred sixty four eighty. So just a little bit under what our contract price was. So came in good on this one. Okay. Any discussion? No. No. Okay, then I'll look for a motion to uh, accept both uh, final review and acceptance and then the uh, progressive estimate. So moved. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? Okay. So all those in favor say aye. 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 And none opposed, and 10 passes. Uh, we've already discussed, I think I'll call it 10C uh, earlier tonight. Okay. So we'll move on to the engineer's uh, All right. public works report. We'll start south and work our way north. Maple Lake Estates contractor has re requested that a final walkthrough be completed. Uh, there is a couple punch list items that they are still withstanding. I don't know what those are off the top of my head. I just got it at our staff meeting this morning that there's some couple punch list items remaining. Um, their rumor has that there's some lots being sold in that phase, so they want to get the builders in there as soon as possible just because of the impending winter. Um, Visto's addition, they were out trimming today. Plan is to pave on Wednesday, weather permitting. I'm not quite <coughs> sure. Looked like they backed off the rain on Wednesday, but it, my computer just told me that there's rain tomorrow, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So they've got <coughs> a pretty aggressive schedule they have till I believe it's uh, three more weeks, so they have to do about two paves a week to get it done within the uh, contract timeline. That that we agreed upon. So they've got a pretty aggressive schedule as far as getting that concrete down. Um, Arrowwood third edition, we're going through some final items as far as punch lists, some um, cleanup items. We met with the contractor last third Wednesday afternoon to talk about that. Same thing with Chess and Iron, we went through that one. The force main is completely installed now. They just have to do some testing on that. There are two areas that are holding water in driveways. We did review those with the contractor and they're going to repair those areas in the Chestnut Drive where they're holding water in the driveways. So we just have to get that marked marked here shortly and they'll they'll do that. Center Avenue is um, multimodal is complete. We had a little education through WDAY last week on the news, so hopefully that kinda helps the people understand that project. The shared use path, they've been working slowly but surely in getting um, the dirt work done around the path. Uh, north of Cutter Road 17, uh, 76th Avenue on Cutter Road 17, and they got some more seated today. They just kind of been working in and around the, the wetness of the rain. So, uh, 66th Street, all of the concrete pavement is is in. They're working on the sidewalks right now. They had a little issue last week, which is they want to slip form pave the sidewalks, and the slip form paver is a pretty heavy machine, so they're having some issues with if the subgrade was holding up because they have to straddle the path, so it's not really where it's built up for the for the path. So they're working on that, but they did get the tie-in to 76th Avenue done, so that's starting to look good. <coughs> and that's uh, all the concrete items, as far as roadway, curb and gutter, are done south of, just south of Christensen Boulevard. They're doing the subcut <coughs> last week. The wells are going in for the extension of the sanitary sewer on Christensen Boulevard um, today, if they hadn't gone in yet and they'll have to pump for seven to 10 days before they can get that sewer in. That's something we talked about be a change order probably a month or so ago. Um, Wall Avenue, uh, the concrete's down on that. They had their sub yeah, in. Hold on, hold on. Before you do that, I'm gonna have to 
you go off of 66, I was just curious, are they still going to try to get the, uh, the flashing beacons up this year for the crossings across 76 to the school? Uh, that hasn't hasn't come up, but I will ask the question uh, tomorrow morning. Let me make a note here. I appreciate that. Um, with the opening of that road, there's going to be a lot of use, and I want to ensure that those those safety measures are in place. Okay. Yep. I will ask the question tomorrow on that. Forgive the interruption. No, Thank that's you. all right. That's all right. Nice to take a break. Otherwise, I can get going. Um, Wall Avenue East, the concrete pavement is in, working on the driveways and some sidewalks and the shared use path on the south side. There are a couple of utility uh, um, conflicts that are being resolved as we go. Um, pretty much, they've really put a lot of work into that one in the past month, so it's really looking, looking pretty good along there. So yeah. I believe the uh, retaining wall starts this week, but I'm sure that that depends upon the weather too. Their three week schedule had it this coming week. So, uh, Wall Avenue West, they were able to get the concrete approach, bridge approach slab in last week. The plan is to get, I believe, I'm gonna tell you southbound, but it's probably the south side, but it's probably the north side that they're gonna get done. Probably the north side this week is their plan to start that, take it out to Lost River Road. And then <coughs> once they get cure on that, they'll switch over. So. Um, I believe it was a Tuesday and a Friday pour or a Wednesday and a Saturday. There's a lot of concrete pours going on to, to juggle all those together. So uh, the two Southdale farms, those are both done. Builders are in there working on those. Cub Creek second edition, uh, Milestone 1, uh, which is basically everything west of Drain 27, is all but complete. There's a couple of items as far as dry utilities that were included in that milestone that aren't, aren't done. but it's tough to kind of control those dry utilities. So um, that project does have a completion date for everything east of the drain to be done by the end of the month. It'd be kind of nip and tuck on that one, but they are putting forth the effort. River's Edge second edition was started a week and a half ago. They're working on the deep sewer and most of the underground. So that one has a completion date of late in 2024, but they're aggressively pursuing getting all of the concrete or all of the underground work done, work done this uh, this fall yet. And then 63rd Street, underground work is done. They're doing subgrade prep and gravel base work this week. Uh, that's another project where the contract was only to have the underground in this year, pave it next year. But if they can get concrete, it looks like they're gonna try to get that one paved this summer or this fall. So that would be quite a bit ahead of schedule if that is <coughs> the case. So it's a quick run through from south to north and <coughs> west to east of the city. Question down on, you said Maple Leaks uh, yeah. has a punch list. Did you put in um, repair on 72nd Street north of uh, Steve Green's driveway there on the west side? I mentioned it. I'll make a more of a point of it in the morning. Thank you. And the same with the 102nd and the 100, 104th and Burgundy drainage too. That's something we're looking at. Okay. And well, you sent me some pictures of that kind of soggy down there. So. Yeah, I haven't looked down there yet. Uh, I guess since they've paved. Right. Have they finished the ditches down there? Yeah, there's a high spot on one though that held some water back. Okay. So we have cleaned out the culverts. Culvert, that's part of the problem too. Okay, yeah. got it. So. Okay. That's all I got. Quick question for you, Dan. Okay. Has anybody expressed any concern about availability of concrete as we get into the fall here? I'm hearing a, a couple things that uh, are parking my ears up with dual pours every week down in Vistos, yep. uh, the concrete that's needed yet for the sidewalks on 66, those are no little sidewalks, those are, you know, community pathways, um, and then obviously this paving, I, I'm just curious if we have any concerns about concrete supply to get us through. Nothing has been, nothing has been brought up every time I've asked it, granted that I haven't harped on it, it's been, there is no, no shortage, no issue that they're foreseeing, so. We'll see if that holds true, but okay. at the weekly Good. construction I'm meetings, I will I'm glad follow to hear up. That. Yeah. Yeah. Ask the question. Um, I will. I'm, I'm hearing some rumblings, so I, I think it might be worth a discussion to just ensure that we have no disruptions at this point. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. 
Anybody else? Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Okay, moving on. Number 12, City Administrator's Report. <coughs> okay, a couple items I have. One, thank you, those that are able to attend League of Cities. <coughs> uh, Corey, Jeff, and Naomi were able to make it from Council. Uh, I think overall it was a pretty good conference there for the sessions. I think we're a little bit more applicable or helpful mm -hmm. for us um, than sometime, some that we've had in the past. Um, I know a question we've been asked now, we finally got the invoice from Cass County in regards to the recall election. The total bill was $8,953.60. Just want to make sure you know Thank what the you. cost was. Uh, significantly lower than what their estimate was. And we anticipated it would be lower, but I didn't think it would be that price. So uh, happy to see it was a lot lower than what <coughs> they ordered us. So. 35000 Yeah. Yeah. 34,000. We told them it was really high, but they uh, still went with that. And anyways, like I said, happy to see that it was a lot less. Um, other news, um, building permit data. Uh, Keith has generated that from the month of September. Uh, a total of 39 new homes in the month of September were issued, or permits, and two twin homes, one commercial. Uh, year to date, that puts you at 76 residential single family homes, 18 twin homes makes up 194 units. So when we're talking a house or a half of a twin home there, uh, 26 commercial units. Uh, a lot of that was done in the industrial apartment <coughs> over by you betcha. Uh, this was playing in some shop condo type buildings in that area. So they permitted quite a few of those. So that's the majority of those permits, I believe is that, um, if that's correct. Um, but anyways, we, I wouldn't be surprised if we get right around that 200 for single family homes, which honestly I don't believe is too bad when given the housing market is not as, aggre or as uh, aggressive or as many permits this year across the country. So to have 200 new homes roughly, you know, I'm just saying ballpark, but around that ballpark is not too bad. Are the, the shop condos, are they how are they permitted? I'm just curious. Are they considered residential or commercial? industrial? Industrial. They're considered commercial. industrial. Yep. <coughs> they, they fall under the report as commercial. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. what I was wondering. Okay. Yeah. So any commercial could be commercial or industrial if it's okay. in that area. So, yeah. Um, and I believe a lot of those are shelling it out and getting it fairly yeah, basic. They're, they're and shell they'll outfit it. They'll like do a remodel to outfit it. Yeah, I just to get a tenant for it. So, mm -hmm. and last one, I'll be touching base with Jeff and Corey. We did um, some more interviews last week for receptionists. Had nine scheduled, two no shows, seven people were interviewed. So I'll be touching base with Jeff um, and Corey on those. So, yeah, and that's what I have. Okay. All right. Well, <coughs> do you have anything then for Corey? I hit my head. Okay. Uh, so moving along, we'll go to Sarah. Sarah, do you got anything? Nope, I'm traveling this week, so I don't have anything additional. I will be back uh, later this week, and I'll have an update for next time. Okay. Naomi. Uh, like Brenton mentioned, went out to Bismarck for the League of Cities Conference. Um, sat in on a few Planning and zoning topics, since that is my portfolio, it was pretty interesting. Um, learned a lot there. And um, I don't know, just recently had a meeting with Jace to discuss a few things. Um, but just trucking along, I guess. That's about it. Okay. I don't have anything either. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, for me, uh, obviously I went out to uh, Bismarck as well. Uh, I did get your email, Jace. Um, pick a time later this week. <laughs> yeah. Not 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 tomorrow or Wednesday, but you know Thursday or Friday. <coughs> time. Uh, another nat. Uh, I had a metrocog meeting today. There wasn't too much discussed on that. Um, one of the topics had to do with uh, the railroad, which we don't really have a railroad anymore. And um, one of the other topics was something that was previously discussed. Uh, multiple times in many meetings ago uh, just the organization layout for um, when we do actually
convert over um, to our transit authority. So other than that, that's all I got for this. Uh, my next item here is number 14. Let's see. Do you want me to read this now or do you want me to take a break? It's up to you. You get to run the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need a break. I think we just gear it into going? it. So I okay. would say that you just look for a so motion we're gonna to go into executive you. sessions. Yeah. You need a motion to go into executive sessions, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll look for that motion then. So moved. I'll second. Okay. So. Okay, let me kill this. So you, you can do your vote on that. You want me to, while we're on camera, yeah. say that? Okay, yep. so executive session uh, held for well, I mean, you need to do your, your <coughs> vote. Oh. You have a motion Sorry. and a second. Sorry, motion and a second. Uh, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Aye. Okay, there you go. Not opposed. Okay. So now we can go ahead and exec. Okay, now we're back in regular. Are you turning on the camera for this? Yeah, because we got to go back in okay. regular session. Fair enough. Let me stop recording here, Sarah. And uh, did, did you call your vote? Oh, I did oh. you do your all in favor? We, it was we all yeah. yeah. It was yeah. Aye. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stand here because right. I'm just going right away. So, I'm going to make a motion to... Uh, oh, well, you'd say no action was taken. No action was taken. We just got an update, right? Yeah, okay. no action was taken during the executive session, so now you go. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn then. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good night, everyone. Aye. Thank you. Have a good night, sir.